Hi everybody, it's Daryl and Leslie. Hi. Today's a big day for us. We are doing our first video presentation of our new 42 foot motor sailor uh, that you see in the background. So what we've done is we built a hull and then we've made an interior mock-up of the boat and to make sure that everything was gonna work appropriately in the way we thought it would in you know, the drawings, obviously. So you can see that we are gonna shorten the bowsprit by 17 and a half inches. We've always felt like that the bowsprit was longer than it needed to be. Uh, so the piece of green tape is where the bow pulpit will end up. Um, so you, you don't have to look at a, a long Pinocchio bowsprit uh, on the new next generation island packet motor sailor. Uh, we also are gonna move the hull side ports forward a little lower and we're gonna double the size of the ones in the forward cabin and then the next hull side port is actually gonna move aft a little bit, down a little bit and it's gonna be located in the guest cabin. All right, we're gonna go up the stairs and we're gonna show you guys the interior mock-up. Walk with us. <laughs> I'm in the cockpit and this is the cockpit of the SP Cruiser Mark II. The last SP Cruiser that Bob Johnson built was extended by about three feet and so we didn't need to extend the cockpit on the boat because he had already done that. We did change all the uh, access to the lazarette as far as storage. Uh, there was a bunch of smaller hatches in the past and we've gone through and we've made two large hatches that will be held up with pneumatic pistons with a removable centerpiece that will allow us to put larger items in there, uh, even as, as much as a folding type by inflatable dinghy. Uh, we will do teak grating all along the uh, hull bottom so that uh, there, nothing would be sitting on the hull itself or in any type of wetness or dampness. Uh, so we'll have some nice teak grating down there. Uh, we have a bar unit that is optional uh, for the cockpit. It will have a cutting board with an ice bin below it, uh, some cup holders, and then there's this lid's actually going to raise up with an electric grill uh, below, and then we're going to have a uh, ice maker as an optional feature. There will be a small storage area on this side for maybe like grill items or something like that. All right, uh, looking at the the back or aft portion of the cabin house. You can see that we have a large cutout here, and what this is gonna be, we're gonna have a window right here, and this window will be on an electric switch that will literally come down right inside of this bulkhead. So it will completely disappear, and then over on this side, we will have a bifold door that will open and then fold back and then end up against this uh, deck combing uh, here on the port side. So when the boat is open, it will have this type of, of uh, large opening between the, the uh, cabin and the cockpit. That indoor-outdoor Yeah, field. so it really allows the, the entertainment area to flow from the cockpit to the salon very nicely. Yeah. All right. Uh, stepping into the salon, we have a port side cabinet over here. Um, and this is obviously is gonna be for electrical. This will all be recessed in about three inches. And we will have a uh, plexiglass, black smoke plexiglass uh, doors uh, over this. So it won't be looking exactly like this. And then we will have a, a flat well drawer, a utensil drawer, and then a dish locker. In this portion uh, down here, we have an isotherm uh, uh, drink refrigerator so you can use it for beer wine soda water whatever you want and then this will be our, our return grill for our air conditioning heat system down there okay and then if you do a water maker most likely the control will go here generator control here uh, the Victron controller here and then we have mounted the fusion stereo there as well okay so nice little area here looking to starboard We've got obviously the galley to starboard. Uh, this gives you a little bit of an idea of what the window cutout will be, and here, and uh, lots so, of light. 
the yeah, none of the none of this windows will open. Although we will have two hatches in the, the door that opens, and of course the back doors. Yeah, a lot of ventilation. So, yeah, so back to the galley, uh, we've got a nice deep sink, uh, about the same size that we use on the four three nine. Uh, obviously, there will be sink covers uh, that will come with it. Uh, we'll have obviously a faucet here, uh, just like we use on the other boats. The growy pull out faucet, hot and cold. Uh, there will be the Seagull filtered water standard, and then of course, as the other boats, the optional pump water. A uh, couple of little bins here for small items, um, you know, sponges or whatnot. We've got a really nice garbage recycle bin here that pulls out. Uh, these are normal size cans for normal 33 uh, gallon, gallon or quart yeah. uh, kitchen garbage bags. So this is actually the same size cans we use at home. And then uh, there will be a divider, obviously, between the garbage in this area here. And this is, you can see, goes way back about four feet. So the storage in this boat is really good. Uh, we're going to have a pull-out drawer or kind of a sliding drawer that comes way out, probably three to four feet, to allow you to access all the storage area back in the back without having to you know, literally crawl through the door. Uh, we may have another cabinet on top or another shelf on top as well. So small items like that we'll figure out as we build the boat. <coughs> we are going to make the boat standard with an electric galley. Uh, we really do not want to build the boat with propane. We don't feel like uh, it's necessary anymore. Uh, and we're not going to gimbal uh, this because we've learned through uh, installations on, on the 439 electric galley that we have put into a gimbaled box that literally with the mat that, that Kenyon supplies for on top of their two burner induction stovetop, you can literally, you can, the boat can heal 30, 40 degrees and the, the pan literally stays on the mat. We've actually done a, a demonstration on it and made sure that was the case. And as you know, the average island packet heals between 10 and 14 degrees. So there would be no problem here. There's no reason to gimbal this. And we do have a nice cover over it so that when you're not using the, the stove top, you do have a full counter area here. Below that, we're going to put a microwave convection oven uh, or really any style oven that would fit in the space that you would like. Below that, we'll have another pull-out drawer. Again, this is a large, deep area here, so the drawers will literally pull out as far as they possibly can for, you know, most likely pots or pan storage or something like that. Continuing along the starboard side, uh, obviously more counter space. We've got the two-drawer refrigerator freezer, uh, about three and a half cubic feet each, uh, that uh, are from, obviously, Vitro Frigo. Um, and then forward, um, we do have our home seat and um, it's uh, going to be standard with the Stid helm seat. Uh, as you guys know, Stid pretty much uh, you know, does the most market, of the yeah. nicer helm chairs in the higher quality yachts. Uh, this is the high back version. We can we can offer it in either the high back version or the the mid range back. Um, and they do have different size pedal stools. We're probably going to go with a medium height pedal stool, uh, which will give us plenty of adjustment. Another little storage area underneath the seat here. I'm thinking, again, this will be a pull-out drawer because, you know, it goes back about two feet. And I'm thinking maybe a, like a little pantry drawer or something like that uh, for, for storing some of the larger stuff, like maybe a cereal box or something like that. Let me move this for a second. And then... So sitting here in the seat, uh, you've got a nice view uh, above the dash. You've got another little storage bin over here on the side uh, that has a lift up. We'll let Leslie take a picture of that. So, you know, this could be used for lots of stuff, lines or charts or, or anything like that. Uh, we're going to build a nice little box here for the VHF. And then obviously the engine control, most likely the Yanmar engine control. Uh, we're going to do accessory switches here, bow thruster, a nice, really nice uh, flush mount compass. And then obviously the configuration in our dash here can be whatever you want. We put two 10-inch uh, displays up there. Uh, they can be, you know, obviously Garmin, they can be Raymarine, any type of display you want. Uh, so, you know, this will get you a good start on the electronics. While I'm sitting here, this is our side door. We will have a helm door here. The bottom half will be solid. 
The top half will be a window. This will be a Dutch style door to where you can open the top portion or the window portion on its own and swing it back for ventilation. And then the bottom will open separately. So it'll, you, you certainly can get good ventilation here. This glass will be eventually cut back to this point uh, and for the tape. This was our original cutout, and obviously this is why you do the mock-up to figure all this out. So we, we just haven't cut that back, but it will go back. Our idea, this is actually a 26 inch wheel. We actually are gonna to go to a 28 inch wheel, and we're gonna offer the leather covered stainless wheel standard, but then we also are gonna offer a wood rim stainless wheel as an option. All right, uh, over to port. We've got our uh, L settee, and uh, this L settee can easily seat uh, probably you know three to four or five people. And then we have our table that has leaves that fold out, and then, uh, you know obviously we'll put our Island Packet Star here, and we're probably going to put a half star and a half star so that you have a full star when the table's closed. <laughs> We've got additional storage behind the settee. And then additional storage in this below the settee here, uh, which will be another pull out, I'm thinking, you know, pantry locker or something like that. Uh, the idea is for the table to be on a adjustable uh, pedestal that will drop completely down. And then we'll have a filler piece cushion if you should need to have this area as a sleeping area. All right, so the companion person can sit here and see out. Uh, there is a, a chart table here, uh, which there'll be, you know, storage below. And then the, the idea of the boat is that all the sh sail handling will be done from the one single Seldene synchronized winch. So we have the lines coming through the bottom of the windshield They'll have like wipers to take any water off if it's obviously the lines are wet. And we'll have the main outhaul coming through the sheet stopper, coming to the winch. So you'll be able to push a button, main out. And, and this winch will spin with the outhaul, pulling the main cell out. And then to put the main cell away, you'll push main in. And of course, if the, you'll unwrap the outhaul off the winch open up the stopper and you'll just tail the outhaul to put the sail back in. The way the synchronized mainsail system works is this winch uses the outhaul to pull the mainsail out and then there's a winch inside the mast that is used to put the sail back. If for some reason you don't have the ability to do it electrically, it can be done manually as well. All right, the next line that comes through would be your jib sheet. So the jib will be on a self-tacking track, just like the 439 and the 349 are now, with no boom. The jib sheet will come through. Again, you'll push jib out, and, and the winch will turn, pulling the jib out, and then the uh, electric furler will spin as well to allow the sail to come out while you pull the sheet out. The next one would be the vine, and then and or the main sheet. So once obviously the main is out, you would close the stopper on the outhaul, raise in, raise the stopper on the main sheet and use the winch to adjust the main sheet. So it will require you to, you know, take a jib sheet off, load the main sheet on, take the main sheet off, load the jib sheet on, but everything will be able to be done from right here inside the boat. And the demographic that we're trying to reach on this boat uh, I believe that's a, a, a good selling feature. And this is all standard on the boat. And again, if for some reason the jib does not come out electrically, there is provisions to do it manually. Right. All right. The reacher on this boat will be optional. So the boat will come standard with the main and the 95% working jib. If you want to do the optional 170 reacher, then you will have to deploy it in, in uh, take it back in from the cockpit. We will have... Uh, electric winches on the combing uh, with buttons as well as in and out for the electric furling system for the reacher. So uh, you, you, but the buttons will be in the cockpit and you will have to, like I said, take the sail out and put the sail back in from the cockpit. We're not able at this time to do the reacher from inside. 
Seldine says in the future we will be able to, but uh, not right now. And I'm not so sure that that's really a big deal. So uh, obviously this whole area will be our solid uh, wood floors. We will offer the boat uh, in the mahogany as well as the maple or the sapelli in the maple like we do all the boats. And so this surface will be the, the solid wood. And of course the floors will be solid wood throughout the boat. So the only places there won't be, obviously, solid wood would be in the heads and, and in the cockpit. All right. We are going to do a door uh, right here, uh, not only for a little bit of privacy, but also if you're, you know, uh, doing the, operating the winch or the buttons and the helm, uh, you have the option to close the door to make it a little bit safer so that you don't accidentally, you know, step off the step. <laughs> Walking down below, we have made a, uh, a nicer stairway. Uh, this is really more like a home type stairway and not the traditional ladder type stairway that we typically find in, in most boats. So very easy to come up and down. The I'll stairs, show you going down. The stairs do lift up for access to the engine room. So down below, uh, Leslie's gone into the guest stateroom port side. It is actually underneath the uh, settee. We don't currently have lights in here, but hopefully you can still see. Uh, we've got a nice double to queen size berth and, and really great storage. There will be doors on these ca this cabinet and this cabinet uh, for contained storage. And then the whole side port is gonna be in here. And we're actually gonna make this more of a rounded shape to a comic to kind of mimic the whole side port. You've got a, a big storage area here in the back on the aft bulkhead that we actually made large enough for a 32 inch duffel bag to be stowed in there. The, the shelf we have down here will continue full length on the cockpit uh, and it will have a fiddle on it. So you'll be able to put your glasses up there, you know, your phone, phone your, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, this will lift up on pneumatic pistons for storage below and then if you want additional water or fuel tankage, uh, this back here uh, does have the ability to do that because uh, there's currently nothing underneath this. Or there, you know, there will be drop-ins here if you don't get the additional tankage where this could be storage. Hanging locker, obviously outboard. Uh, we're going to do a book rail across here for book storage, um, and then obviously the bunk rail around here for storage on top. And then this is the large hanging locker that was actually a uh, bit lar excuse me, large enough for the washer uh, combo dryer. And of course, if you haven't heard from previous videos, all of the washer dryer units we put in are vented units. So they do operate like a normal house unit would, obviously smaller capacity, but it's not like the ones that you know, just, just tumble suction. and try to suck the moisture out of the clothes right. and don't really work very well. This actually works. We have. We've installed probably 30, 30 or more units in the boats and, and everybody's enjoying them. Uh, we will have a hatch here and there will be a couple ports right here as well, uh, deck ports. Uh, so you'll have some decent ventilation and, in, the, uh, in the guest cabin. There also will be an option for obviously air conditioning and heating uh, for the uh, salon area as well as the, the lower uh, cabin area. If we move forward, uh, Right in front to port of the guest cabin is the guest head. It is designed as a wet head. Obviously, the toilet will sit right here. Uh, sink, faucet, pull out faucet to shower with if you need to. We'll have a, a, a can here for garbage that will be mounted on the bulkhead. Storage, outlet, another outlet inside, and then a, a cabinet storage below the countertop. As always, drains throughout the floor. And then we've got the owner's stateroom all the way forward. Uh, this is honestly the only thing we kept from the previous boat uh, besides, you know, the basic hull design. Everything else we have changed, um, you know, with our island packet design team. Um, so these are the larger hull side ports, uh, which actually go right about here. Um, and our tape's not doing a really good job of holding them up. We'll have to work on that. Uh, obviously, you know, queen size berth, uh, lift up, uh, 
storage or hinge uh, with storage below. There will be a drawer down here as well. Uh, and then you've got his and her shelf lockers, his and hers hanging lockers. There you go. Uh, port to port, we have the owner's head. Stall shower all the way back. Nice seat, stall shower, plenty of room, very similar size to our, our current stall showers. You know, shower door like we always do, you know, that's sandblasted with the way the island packet design. It will, you know, obviously close off nicely to give you a nice area there where you're gonna keep the rest of the head dry. You've got the toilet will sit here. You've got a, a vanity cabinet. We're, we're probably going to extend the cabinet back this to make it a full length uh, for more storage. Uh, obviously, either the vessel sink or the under counter corian sink storage. Storage. This door will open. There'll be a uh, toilet paper holder on there, and there'll be a garbage bin inside underneath the cabinet. All right, and then we will have these stairs that will lift up. And this will be one of two accesses into the boat. So these stairs will lift up. They will be held up by a pneumatic piston. And the, um, we're going to use a piece of wood as an interim mm -hmm. support. Uh, so this is kind of a crawl-in engine space. But honestly, for a 42-foot sailboat, it's not so bad. Uh, the actual headroom will be... Uh, up to here, these beams will be here when we do this out of fiberglass. Obviously, out of wood, we have the beams to support the beams. 110 horsepower Yanmar engine, 6kW Northern Lights generator as option. Uh, we've got water tanks back here. We're going to, this is a little workbench that honestly uh, is going to come down to about this height. And then we will be able to extend it all the way to the bulkhead, depending on whether you want additional tankage here or not. So we have made uh, provisions at this spot for an additional 126 gallon fuel tank if you want it, uh, and it would take up this spot. If you don't do the additional fuel tank, then we can do uh, obviously a longer workbench. We can do shelves on the bulkhead for storage. And then uh, our battery storage is aft. Uh, we will have some tin grating in here so you can get from side to side. And then the uh, on further aft is the lazarette. There will be a door that will close that off for us. And, you know, this is really more of a 42-foot uh, trawler engine room, if you ask me. Uh, this honestly has about the same space as uh, most 35 to 45-foot trawlers uh, down below. Um, so, honestly, that pretty... It concludes this part of the interior mock-up tour. Uh, we are going to walk over to the deck plug right now, which is the same as a part would be. So we build the plug first, then we build the mold from the plug, and literally then we're able to build a part from the mold, but the part does end up looking just like the plug. So the plug we're going to go show you next will be basically very similar, if not the same, as the finished part for the deck house. All right, so you guys have a great day. And, Thanks. Uh, look for the next exterior video that we'll be <laughs> doing, and we'll probably be posting, obviously, these at the same time. Uh, we wish everybody the best, as always, and God bless. Thanks, guys.